Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing good. So today in this video, we will be discussing about the production planning and execution process in the make to stock scenario. So let's get into the process flow of how the make to stock scenario is being uh, executed in the SAP. So now here uh, in the make to stock, so basically the production happens for the finished product based on a demand that can be a safety stock or it can be a planned independent requirements or to say that uh, it also can be the part of the demand management. So let's take an example of uh, the demand plan which has been created by the sales team. So this forecast can be based on the previous consumption history or the sales for that particular product, right? So now the sales and operation planning team is going to provide uh, a forecast of the quantities that the finished product has to be manufactured in the next coming uh, periods. So this forecast can be created uh, on a monthly bucket or it can be created uh, half yearly or it can be cre created quarterly or also uh, based on weeks, right? So in this example, we'll be discussing on the demand that has been created for the next four months. So now let's take a product A which has been forecasted to uh, manufacture at 20,000 pieces in the month of March and in the month of April it has been forecasted to manufacture 25,000 and May 22,000 and 25,000 in the month of June. So now this is a forecast that the sales and operation planning team has been uh, provided to the production supervisor to manufacture the product. Right. So now let's say the demand has been created uh, in the system for the product and after that we have the planned independent requirements in the active version. So basically when the sales and operation planning team is going to provide the forecast so it can be in two methods one is the active version and the other one is the inactive version. So now the MRP is going to read the plan independent requirements only which are in the active version but not the inactive ones. So the inactive ones still, still stay in the uh, uh, system in the demand plan but they cannot be transferred to the uh, material requirements planning until it has been activated. So now once the uh, plan independent requirements have been uh, uh, created and changed to active version so now they will be moved into the MRP calculation where we would see those uh, PIRs uh, in the MD04 of that particular product. So now since we have the demand created as the first step and the second step is to execute a MRP. So now uh, while we execute the MRP there are again two options here. One is to use the background MRP through which uh, a background job can be scheduled in the system so to run periodically. And the second method is to run the manual MRP uh, on the material. So this would be done manually by the user, right? So there are two methods that through which we can uh, execute the MRP. So now during the MRP system is going to evaluate the existing stocks of that material uh, in the plant, right? So based on the uh, available stocks for the product and based on the forecast quantity so then system is going to adjust the quantities and then the planned orders will be created for the remaining quantities. So let's say uh, in the month of March where we have a uh, demand for 20,000 pieces and we already have a planned stock of 10,000 pieces in the unrestricted use. So then the planned order would be created only for the 10,000 quantity why because the existing 10,000 can uh, be used to fulfill the demand in the month of March, right? So now, once we have the plan order created, and this is for the finished product, right? Based on the procurement type. So similarly, in order to manufacture the product, we would also need raw materials, right? So now, while the MRP is being executed for the material, so then it also checks the stock levels for the raw materials that would be required to manufacture the product based on the uh, bill of materials. So now the bill of material which is also called as the bomb it holds the complete set of components that are needed to manufacture the product. So based on these quantities system is going to calculate 
like in in order to manufacture 20000 pieces of the product so how much quantity of the raw materials are actually needed right so based on that the mrp is going to look at the stock situations for all the components and in case there is insufficient stock for any of those components so now system is going to create a purchase requisition based on the uh, mrp run for those raw materials so these purchase requisitions will follow the uh, purchasing process where these will be converted to a purchase order and then once we receive the stock from the supplier those will be uh, fulfilled in the uh, plant stock and which will be consumed into the uh, production process at a later stage right so now let's assume that the procurement process is going in parallel right and the next stage is that once we have the uh, components available in the stock so now the production planner is going to convert these planned orders into process orders right so the planned orders are basically the uh, planning element and whereas the process order is a firm receipt it means that the production team is going to use the details on this process order or the work order uh, which is called uh, generally in the shop floor language but in sap we call it as a process order and also a production order and there is a difference between the process order and the uh, production order and that depends on the usage of uh, these orders in the uh, process manufacturing or the discrete manufacturing so you are uh, usually in the process manufacturing we uh, we use process orders and in case of a discrete manufacturing we use production orders so let's uh, try to understand about these process orders and production orders in uh, next videos so now while converting the planned order into a, a process order so then system is going to read the bill of material and the master re recipe that has been created for the product we are manufacturing now so these details will be copied down to the process order so now when we talk about the master data of the product it basically has uh, two main uh, master data one is the bill of material which will hold the complete list of uh, components and the second one is the master recipe so this master recipe will hold the details of the operations and its sequence in what all uh, work centers or the machines these operations have to take place in a sequential manner right so once we have the process order created so now we have uh, a few intermediate stages like releasing the operations and executing the operations and confirm the operations so now when we talk about the operations so these are basically the activities that the production team is going to perform in the shop floor in order to manufacture the product so now by creating a process order it doesn't mean that the production activity can start immediately so we need to release the process order right so only when we release the process order we have the shop floor papers printed in the system so that those shop floor papers will hold the information of the components that are needed to manufacture uh, the product and how much quantity is needed and if the components are batch managed it will also tells us tell us that from which batch the component should be picked and similarly uh, which operation is to be performed in what sequence and what are the durations that are needed while executing the operations so we do have a planned set of uh, operations right and their uh, lead times so let's say we have an operation of drilling or milling so we do have a plan duration that will take to drill one particular hole on one part so now based on the total number of quantities we are going to manufacture for the product so the operation time will be multiplied based on the uh, master data setup that we have done in the master recipe right and next in order to uh, push the production uh, push the process order uh, to the production process we need to release the process order so while releasing the process order system is going to perform few mandatory checks 
like the availability of the materials and whether we have sufficient capacity on the work center to execute that particular operation or not. So based on these two checks, so we have an option in the configuration where the user can decide whether to release the process order or to stop it until we have uh, the shortages or the uh, insufficient capacities being resolved. Let's assume that the process order has been released. So now the operations that we have in the process order will also have the status as released. So which means that the shop floor activity can be initiated. So once the operations are released, so then the next step is to consume the components uh, that are needed to manufacture uh, the finished product. So while consuming the components, these are basically uh, coming from the bill of material that we have for the product, right? So now the consumption of the components can happen in two methods. One is based on the actual production or based on the bill of material. So when I say based on the bill of material, it means that if the bill of material is defined as to consume only 10 pieces of raw material one, so then we can only consume uh, 10 pieces of that particular raw material. But if I'm going to consume this components based on my production or my actual production, it means that whatever quantity I might need at that particular production uh, time or while executing the operation, I can consume based on the uh, requirement. So it can be 10 pieces, it can be 11 or it can be 9 pieces as well, right? So that depends on the scenario whether we are using a backflash indicator or are we using the normal goods issue process based on the reservation quantities, right? So we'll get into uh, more details of that. So first, let's try to understand of what are the steps involved in the make to stock scenario here. So now the operations, uh, I mean, the components have been consumed, which means that the components are moved to the shop floor where they can uh, start manufacturing uh, the product by following a set of uh, operations. So now that comes under the operation execution. So once the operation has been executed or completed, so then the user has to confirm that operation in this particular step. So which means that he, he has to post a transaction in SAP that the operation has been completed and this much this is the yield that has actually been generated in this particular operation. And these are the actual hours that have incurred on that particular work center. So let's say we have a, a granulation stage where the raw materials ha have been put into the granulator and then the machine has been uh, initiated. So now my plan duration for the granulation to complete is around 15 minutes. So, but in actual, I took around 18 minutes or 20 minutes, right? So those actual values will be posted on this particular operation at the time of confirmation. So now, since we have done the uh, consumption of the components and the operations have been executed completely. So now the next stage is to perform the goods receipt of the finished product into the storage location. So this activity means that the final product has been manufactured and now we are moving this finished product into the storage location. So the movement of this uh, finished goods into the storage location will depend on whether we have a quality module involved in between or can we just directly push the uh, finished product into the unrestricted queues. If you are using the quality module or the QM module, so then we have to push this <coughs> manufactured stock into the uh, QC location or the quality inspection stock, where in which the quality inspector is going to perform some checks and then he is going to evaluate the final quantity that will be passed based on the uh, characteristics evaluation. And then he decides how much quantity should be moved into the unrestricted use and how much quantity should be moved into blocked if there are any defects observed, right? So once we have the shop floor uh, activities completed, so then we, the 
production manager is going to mark the process order or the production order as technically completed. So which means that from a technical standpoint, the order has been uh, processed completely and there are no pending activities on this particular process order. So once the uh, order has been uh, marked as technically completed or techo, so then the costing team is going to read that process order or the production order and perform the settlement process such as the variance, cal the variance calculation and the uh, settlement on the production order or the process order. So now during the variance cal calculation, so the system is going to evaluate the difference between the planned cost and the ac actual cost. So let's say the planned manufacturing cost of the product is around the 1000 rupees, right? So now what is the actual cost that has incurred after the manufacturing process? Is it 900 rupees or is it 1100 rupees? So now that difference will be basically settled on this particular <coughs> order or the finished product. And once the costing team has completed the costing activities, so then they are going to mark the process order uh, as closed. So once the process order has been marked as closed, so no further activities are allowed on the process order like a goods issue or a reversal of any document or anything like that, right? So if you like to perform such activities in order to revert some uh, transactions or some goods movements, so then we, we have to change the status of this order uh, from closed to techo and then techo to released. So only then we, we would be able to uh, make some changes uh, on those uh, process orders. So I hope you understood uh, the overview of the make to stock process and how the production planning uh, is going to run in the make to stock scenario in this video. So if you have any comments, suggestions, please do uh, post them as comments under the video. Thank you all again uh, for watching this video. We'll meet you soon in the next video. Take care till then. Bye-bye.